Hello, I'm Brad Zanders with the Subset Electronics Products Support Group, and over the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about updating TK trackers and displays using the TK Updater Program. Now, the TK Updater Program has actually been around for about three years, so some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, you may have been using it a bunch already, and that's great. If you haven't and you're new to this program, I think you're really going to like it. So over the next few minutes, you'll learn how to navigate through that system and what its features and benefits are. So what is the TK Updater Program and why did we create it? The TK Updater Program is basically a free program that the dealer or the end user can install on their PC and remotely update software in the field on any tracker, any TK tracker or TD or TDR display. So what this does is it eliminates the ability to have to send them back to the factory just for a simple or routine software update. Uh, the way this process works, it's done via Bluetooth connection. It's a wireless Bluetooth connection between the two units. So whether you have a track or a display and you're connecting to a PC, um, it's done through those Bluetooth radios. A couple things you need to know about Bluetooth before we get started. Um, you do have to have a Bluetooth, an internal Bluetooth device, or an external Bluetooth device running on your PC before you can uh, utilize the program. Now, not all internal Bluetooth devices are compatible with the program, so if you have an issue connecting to a track or a display, it may be necessary to acquire another uh, Bluetooth adapter. These two I have listed here on the screen are simply USB Bluetooth adapters that can be uh, you know, acquired on Amazon.com for less than $15. The MediaLink, the one on the left, or the Kinevo, which is the brand I actually use on my laptop, uh, both of them have worked great. Okay, so where do you find the TK Updater Program? Uh, the TK Updater Program can be found at the web address below, and it's easily installed onto the PC by following the brief instructions next to the update. Uh, one thing I need to mention is be sure your computer's operating system is uh, also compatible with the program. It lists the details right here. Uh, it requires Windows Vista Service Pack 2 or newer, so most of you should be okay there. Uh, again, here's the web address where you'd find the TK Updater program. It's at updates.subsite.com. Uh, another thing I want to mention is a lot of people have been requesting uh, that we have this uh, capability in a mobile format, so either using a tablet uh, or a, a cell phone. Uh, we actually have that capability today, but it's done through our TSR mobile software. So if you haven't looked into that, I would encourage you to watch the videos on that. Uh, learn more about it, how you can actually update uh, trackers and displays with a mobile device. But for this uh, short tutorial, we'll just focus on the PC version. So with that said, once you have the program installed on your PC, you should see a little TK Updater icon. It looks exactly like this, placed on your desktop. If for some reason you do not see this icon on your desktop, it's really easy to find. If you just click on the Windows Startup menu, down here in this small icon uh, it'll, and then you click on all programs you're going to be looking for the Charles Machine Works Incorporated folder when you open that you'll see the TK Updater program there and you can simply click and drag it to your desktop and you've created a shortcut. So what happens when you first double click on the TK Updater icon? Initially as long as you're hooked to the internet it's going to ping the internet and search for the latest version of the TK Updater. We're currently running version 13. Uh, it does prompt you. It notices that, hey, you have an older version. Do you want to install the new version? So I would recommend you do that. Um, but once you have the latest version, you're now ready to go out in the field with your laptop uh, and you don't have to have an internet connection to update trackers and displays. Okay, so now you're ready to connect to a TK or a TD or TDR. Um, one of the things you want to make sure is the first line here. Make sure the TK has adequate battery life to run the update. So if you're running a TK, make sure you've got good fresh batteries in it. Uh, if you're updating a TD or a TDR, obviously you're probably going to be using 12 volt uh, power supply from the drill, or you could have one of our remote uh, power up harnesses. Um, if you don't, they're very handy to use if you're updating displays uh, in the office. So the first thing you do is just turn on the TK or the TD, 
and I, I use both of these uh, together because the process is the same whether you're updating the tracker or display. Uh, once you double click on the updater icon, you're going to see uh, the updater open up and it's going to start scanning. You'll see scanning down here and it's going to be looking for the device that you have on. Um, another thing is you want to ignore any pop-ups. You'll see these messages that could come in a couple different forms depending on what operating system you're running. But if a Bluetooth device is trying to connect, just ignore that. The TK updater will make that connection for you. Um, once a unit's been seen by the updater, uh, you'll see it pop up here and it'll obviously be the last four digits of the serial number of the unit you have there. Uh, then you can double click on it. Once that connection is established, you'll see this message pop up here that says data received. Uh, and another way you can tell is if you look at uh, the tracker, the display on the bottom menu bar, you'll see this little Bluetooth icon. So that's a good way to verify uh, that you've made that connection and you're ready to actually start the update. Now one of the first things that most of you will see because you're going to have an older version unit, you're trying to get it to the latest version, is again, just like the TK updater, uh, when you first click on the icon, recognizes whether you have an older version of it. Same happens with the product you're connected to. Uh, it will notice that, like this says here, you'll see this message. Uh, there's a software available, update available for this device. What's currently there is 12, 13 is available. Would you like to update? And you're going to click yes. Now, once the download starts, you just sit back and wait. Typically, it takes one to two minutes. Uh, version 13 can take just a little longer. But basically, you're going to see um, the tracker, the display, go through a series of screen changes. Initially, you'll see it showing, please wait. Then it'll show that it's waiting for a file. Within a few seconds, you'll see that it's receiving those files. Um, and then it'll actually continue the update. Uh, and then it'll show updating. Once it's finished, what you're going to see is the cycle or the power will cycle off and then back on on the product. So you'll see the splash screen come back up um, and then basically the new software is there. If you look in the lower left hand corner um, of the product, when it comes back on on that menu bar, it will show you the version of software. So it should say 13. Uh, if for some reason you missed it because it does pop up fairly quick, you can also find the software version in the About menu inside the System menu. So that's the same for a tracker or display. Okay, so now you know how to update a tracker and display. It's a pretty simple, uh, very easy process. Um, but one thing I want to point out is you may see a updating failed message come up on the tracker or display. Uh, you could see a data error on the TK updater and the message bar on it. And if this happens, don't panic. Simply uh, what I have people usually do is just close down the TK updater program, cycle the power on the tracker, the display, get them both back open. Um, what I like to do is have the tracker display on first, then open up the TK updater program, let it scan for it again, try to go through that connection process. And typically if you have an issue the first time, the second time it'll go right through. So. Uh, don't be alarmed if you see that kind of a message. So what are some of the other additional features uh, of the TK Updater program? Probably the next most used feature is going to be simply uh, for retrieving stored jobs or importing jobs into the TSR program. So because we have the ability to store pipe information on trackers, on TKDs, TKQs, and TDs, TDRs, uh, you may want to create an as built and you do that through the TSR program. So we use the TK updater to import those jobs into that. Uh, you can actually uh, set the date and time, the current date and time on uh, the tracker or the display to whatever it is on your PC. Uh, this icon here is the icon actually that uh, you would click on to connect to download jobs. We do have videos on that. So if that's a process or something you need to do, be sure you watch those videos on how to pull jobs off of a tracker or display with the TK updater program. We have the ability to calibrate the bubble level that's on the TK products. Uh, if you click on that icon, it will walk you through those steps. Uh, we actually have the ability by clicking on the camera here uh, to capture screenshots of the tracker displays. Could be used for PowerPoint presentations you might want to create for training. 
uh, or for some troubleshooting uh, issues. And then there's manual software updates, which is achieved through this tab here. Uh, most of you will never use that again as uh, the TK Updater updates software for you. So hopefully you've learned something over the last few minutes, um, how to get through the TK Updater, what it is, where to find it, uh, important things to remember about Bluetooth, uh, the features and benefits that it can uh, give to you. So if you have any further questions, I would encourage you to contact your local subsite dealer uh, so they can assist you, they're closer to you, but you're always welcome to contact us here at the subsite Electronics Products Support Group. Thank you.